So how is it working with the house? Oh, well, you should know. <laughs> For me, it's still kind of awkward to meet up with Karen, but it'll always impact me till the day I die. On Little People Big World this week, Tori and Zach are watching their kids grow up, and they can't believe Jackson graduated kindergarten. I can't believe he's graduated. <laughs> Why are you crying over it? Because it's our baby. Jackson's kindergarten graduation it went really well, but it was a little tough for me. He's grown so yeah, much so in much. Here. And every now and then we'll look at like old videos of him and be like, oh my gosh. So. That like chubby baby fat is gone and he's it's just, just like different a kid. personality. Yeah, he's a person now. However, Jackson's idea of a fun summer activity is camping out in the backyard, which is not Tori's cup of tea. You guys both weigh 50 pounds. You weigh 20 pounds. You weigh 50 pounds. Mom weighs this, like, I'm not going to say how much I weigh, but a cot is just not. Okay, Zach, can you shush up 130? over there? Was that right? No. Like way off? Way off, honey. I weighed 130 like in high school. Like 133? Sure, we'll go with that. Lila, are you going to camp out with us? I did this growing up. We all camped out together, and it's a fun thing to do for all families. I think all families should put themselves all in a tent for the night, and, you know, I think it's a good experience, and I think the kids will remember it, and it's always just good to be together as a family like that. The family tried to glam up the camping area, but after hearing Tori share about the disastrous last camping experience she had with Zach, it's not hard to understand why this might not be her idea of a fun time. You guys took the boat out and I got left on the shore for like a solid three hours. And like by the time everyone came back in, they were all too tired to go back out. So I never got to go on the boat. And then we're all sitting around the fire making dinner and they were making beans in a can that they didn't poke any holes in it. And so there was nowhere for the air to be released. It exploded in the pot and it hit me. And so I got like, I thought I was going to need stitches. I got a huge cut on my leg and I got hot beans all over me, a huge gash in my leg. And that was the last camping trip I've been on. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that was the worst. It was the worst. They ended up having the family camping night and Zach brought up concerns that Lila might need surgery. Sorry, do you think Lila's going to need surgery on that left leg though? Yeah. What did the doctors say about it? It's not as bad as Jay's, but she'll probably need help. When, though? He didn't say. Lila's legs are showing bowing, like Jackson's words. Whether it's as severe or not, we don't know until we make measurements and everything. Um, but she, she might have to have leg surgery as well. Surgery is another, that's a, that's, that's a huge ball game. You hope that's the only one that she needs. Matt also opened up about some health issues he's been facing with his esophagus. I don't need anything right now. You sure? Why don't you take a little sip? It just bubbles up like a volcano until it comes out. And you're it's like, shocking. It's, it's shocking. actually it's shocking. It's very, very um, dramatic. So the doctor, you know, recommended that we need to go down there with the scope. You know, then they saw that it was real tight, so they wanted to stretch it so the food would go down a little easier. Very routine procedure. And um, that didn't, it didn't go as planned. That was kind of traumatic. I don't remember much. I know, you were like out. Karen revealed that during a procedure that Matt was having, there was concern that something went wrong and he had quite a scare. They did the test and you were drinking the stuff and I was watching, they let me stay in there and I could see, I thought, oh God. And so as you drank it, you know, it went down and they did it to like three or four times, they had you take sips and it didn't show a perforation. But I could tell that the doctor thought that that could have happened. It was honestly, in the end, more of, of an emotional sort of experience than physical. Once we found out that he, they did not perforate the esophagus and that we had dodged that bullet, because that could have been very dangerous. So it was, it, it, we got through it, but it's definitely opened up a lot of future conversations that we're having about how we would handle health issues for both of us. 
Matt's health scare sparked a conversation between Chris and Amy about their later in life care plans. If I need assistance, you're gonna hire it out? <laughs> no, I. but I mean, I, I can't like lift you. I can't, you know, That's do any true. of that stuff. Well, uh, it's okay, hon, I'm bulletproof. I'll be taking care of you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you up for that? Uh, sure. I mean, there's really no comparison between Matt and Chris because when you're born with a dwarfism and stuff, you kind of already know at some point in your life that you're gonna be dealing with some health concerns. But with Chris, you know, He's just like average Joe Blow and bulletproof and rarely ever sick. And so hopefully he'll be able to handle it if I am. <laughs> Amy shared that she's worried about spinal stenosis, but Chris is trying to remain positive. But achondroplasia dwarfism have a history of spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis is the tightening around your spinal cord. A lot of acons have a smaller space between the vertebrae, so it tightens up the spinal cord. Then you can have numbness, you can have pain, you can have lack of movement. That to me is pretty serious. And mine may be happening in the neck first, which is to me the worst part. I don't know, babe, but that's not good. I'm just not the type to worry about something that hasn't happened yet. You know, I just always you know, assume or hope for the best, but uh... You know, I won't have any tr trouble adapting if... You some... mean you'll take care of me? Absolutely, hon. You know, I... You'll carry me up the stairs if you have to? Or turn the office into a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Amy met up with Karen to talk about the charity event, and she admitted that it's sometimes awkward to hang out with her. For me, it's still kind of awkward to meet up with Karen, but we're also meeting up with each other for a cause. And you don't have to get into personal things and, you know, go in that different space because it's not necessary. It doesn't serve anything. Not that, you know, way back in Matt and I situation, that still doesn't have an impact on me because, you know, it'll always impact me till the day I die. But, you know, you just do the best you can. They talked about Matt's health scare and how they plan to be there for their partners during their later years. And it's like Matt said, we could worry all about me and me being a dwarf, and you could be the one that comes down with breast cancer. Or, I mean, anything can happen. And then I don't think he could take care of me, but he'd do what he does best. He'll hire somebody. Yeah. So we just kind of got to go with each day. We know, but none of us know the future. Uh -uh. There are more complications when you know that you have someone that has dwarfism, because there's always a little bit more risk, but. I can't fix dwarfism. I can't fix anything that may happen with Matt, but I can try to be prepared and I, I'm in for the long haul. I'm up for the challenge.